All right, hello everyone. This is Crota coming at you, and I am casting this first thing in the morning. Um, yeah, that last game, that that game too, I laughed at myself. I listened back to what I was saying. I was completely incoherent and did not make any sense for about three minutes. And that's what you get when you try to just do too much. So what I'm trying to do right now is I am definitely, definitely casting my games in the morning. I am much more refreshed, and I should be able to cast these games rather well. Now, what I am going to be saying is that this is going to be a game, game one in a series between FQQ and Yumiko. Yumiko playing under the name Roberta here on Secret Valley, as he spawns as the white human player on the top right-hand side of the map. Now, unfortunately for me, there is a little bit of an issue uh, since i am casting this in the morning i sometimes have to take phone calls i apologize already if i have to pause the game and mute it and then i'll have to start it back up um, i am using a new recording technique that doesn't actually let me pause the video recording and i don't have enough time to edit the video afterwards because well i actually really need to do work Let's go ahead and just jump into here. You can see that FQQ did open up with the sped built Altar of Kings. Meanwhile, down over here, you saw, or up over here, meanwhile, Yumiko just built a standard Altar of Kings, and it is going to be an Archmage versus Archmage matchup. Now, I am trying to avoid the human mirror matches. It is something that I tend to be casting a little bit more, and it isn't because I know human the best. Um, it's just because there seems to be a lot of human players out there. I think like 30 to 40% of players out there are currently playing human. And with that, you are going to get many more mirror matches. I don't even remember the last time I cast an undead mirror match, um, save for uh, Ted versus someone a couple of months ago. Anyways, Archmage already out on the field, but this Archmage is coming over here and he tried to go for harassment. All right, so he sped built his Altar of Kings. And all he really did was got to the other end to only see that his opponent's Archmage did do a little bit of damage to him. So what is this Archmage really hoping to do? That is the question. He may be trying to go for some sort of Blizzard tactic. Now, what is exactly that Blizzard tactic? It is exactly what it sounds like. You try to come in and cast Blizzard right, as, um, right on top of your opponent's Goldmine line. And what we actually see here is the positioning on Yumiko's Arcane Tower is so perfect to prevent this. Now the problem is whether or not he actually teched Blizzard. If he teched Blizzard, that means that he cannot drop Water Elementals and he's not going to be able to really creep. Now, coming back around, it looks as though he's not quite sure what he wants to do. He wants to come in for very, very strong harassment. And this does make sense because he did go for a keep. He went for a keep first and a very, very fast keep at that. Meanwhile, his opponent, Yumiko, has not even teched the tier 2 yet. This Archmage still wandering around. And are we going to see a little bit of harassment? This Archmage really just wants to perhaps get a Blizzard down or two onto all of these units. He has not done that yet. Now perhaps going to be picking up those Boots of Speed. Boots of Speed. Um, it looks like he did spend some mana. Um, so it does look like it was a Blizzard. Oh, a Pure Up to Vitality. All right, so he is buying a lot of items early on on this Archmage. This is not your traditional play at all, as we are now looking at the Archmage trying to run away, also picking up a Staff of Teleportation. Not exactly sure what that is about, as the Militia now going to perhaps try to run back over here. Oh, this is the reverse tactic. If you are able to get a Militia back here, you can actually teleport to that location. And then by teleporting to that location, you can um, blizzard onto the mineral line without the arcane tower actually being in range. All right, you can see that, oh, the peasant is taking a little bit of damage. And this is actually interesting here is the peasant. Oh, staff of teleportation already trying to get there. And there it goes. The archmage is now in the backfield. And this is going to cause a little bit of an issue. All right, let's see what's going to be happening now. Militia are trying to come in here. Water alum. Oh, blizzard straight up on top of all of these units as now. Now, Yumiko is forced to back off here. All right, a little bit of an interesting play. Is he going to continue to just cast Blizzard down on all of these units? Now just attacking and causing a lot of harassment. All right, pulling back in between the trees. And now in comes another round of Blizzard. All of those militia are being forced to pull back. Are they going to get stuck? It looks as though no, none of them are going to actually fall. They are just down over here, very low on hit points. Now actually getting Blizzard on the gold mine line as all those units are backing off still. 
so far this strategy is not really dealing much damage at all you can see that the blizzard is raining down on all of these units nothing oh nothing that a, a scroll of regeneration cannot stop and now you see the speed building of that arcane vault now the question is what is he really going he's going for a fast castle Oh my goodness, he's going for a fast castle in the fast griffins. This is a strategy. He's already going into castle here. You can see at the 5 minute 30 second mark, he is already double building that griffin aviary. And he is also getting an arcane vault. What is this archmage really hoping to do? He used the scroll of town portal and he does not have any experience on the board. Archmage, on the other hand, does have triples and ivory towers. So he may be trying to tower his opponent, which is actually the worst strategy that you can try to go for. No, he is not going to be doing that. He's going to be going for... Um, oh yeah, of course. He's going to be setting up an expansion. And what was I thinking? Yeah, tower, ivory tower your opponent who's going for griffins. That would be a w really horrible, horrible idea. As you can see, now the scout towers are coming into play. Archmage is getting back up to... Um, well, getting back up to full hit points pretty much. He does have some mana, but not that much without that more really, really important uh, Brilliance Aura. That Archmage mana is just so, so empty. Now you can see that the Griffin Aviaries are almost done. The castle is now about 20 seconds away from being completed. And more importantly, you can see down over here, these Arcane Towers are being constructed. Now, this is a really interesting strategy by FQQ. FQQ has been kind of forcing his hand showing hey i'm gonna blizzard you i'm gonna blizzard you but this is really a mind fake or um just a, a head a major major head fake because what he's really going for is griffins and well um no he's gonna be going into dragon hawks and first why go into dragon hawks when you have access to griffins already um no wait wait for it wait for it Gri griffin griffin no no okay apparently not griffins yet as we can see that the archmage is now being forced to pull back come on griffins don't make me a liar. Griffins, you're sitting on 900 gold. Okay, triple a uh, triple dragon hawks. Uh, okay, I would have said like two dragon hawks and, and a griffin as the griffins are really going to be that strong. Um, but I guess he's looking to really take down these arcane towers with a cloud. You can see that triple griffin aviary and uh, also a cloud of being teched. This is really just rather confusing as the dragon hawks are not going to be that strong. Also, you notice that there is no barracks in this build. And that means that these dragon hawk riders are going to be relatively low on hit points. All right, the archmage is now trying to hide back over here. And this is where a griffin or two would have really made a difference. The griffins could have easily taken down all of these footmen. As we are now currently going into griffin aviaries by Yumiko as well. All right, let's take a look at this. The Dragonhawk Riders are going after these green creep camps off over here. Um, relatively um, relatively safe in terms of damage. No ensnare cloak of shadows. You can see a lot of Dragonhawk Riders now currently up in the air as that Archmage is still regenerating hit points off to the top off to the top left back over here look what's going to be happening they're just flying overhead perhaps they're going to try and make it make its way down to this fountain of health um archmage no it's going to be going straight into this expansion location here and trying to use cloud now the important question is going to be what whether or not it is effective the archmage needs to run over there there is the cloud going after all of the peasants now three arcane towers completely shut down as the archmage is now attempting to run away beastmaster is out on the field there is quill beast as well that is important as all of those dragon hawk riders are going after the peasants and there is no mining going on whatsoever all right let's go ahead and try to take down some of those peasants one peasant does get taken down another peasant gets taken down now going after more peasants here as the dragon hawks are still just running forward the dragon hawk riders relatively low oh we need to get another cloud down there it goes there is another cloud as you can see the damage is starting to add up but the dragon hawk riders uh, many of them um, uh, i believe one of them actually got taken down yeah there's only f what five there was six i believe at some point and these dragon hawk riders are so low on hit points there's not much that can really be done more dragon hawk riders being added archmage off over here trying to heal up you can see that he does have brilliance aura now because of all of the experience from those kills but we still need to wait for nightfall to really try and creep out this red drake creep camp all right um, if you can actually get these dragon hawk riders close enough oh they're just going to stand overhead and just constantly move around and not attack that is a something that i've never really seen before you can actually get that close to um creeps 
air creeps and not engaged. So it is just a, a constant move back and forth as the Archmage still running around off over here. All right, it looks as though the Dragonhawk Riders are going to be making another move in over here. Are we going to see Cloud? Yes, we are. And here we go. The Dragonhawk Riders are looking to engage. Oh, there is a whole bunch of uh, Dragonhawk Riders there. There is an ensnare um, or a shackle, but that shackle is not going to work out all too well. As uh, No, it looks as though all the units are going to be backing off. All right, Blizzard now being brought in from the north as it looks as though the Archmage is trying to just take down this whole entire line here. It looks like a couple of peasants will go. And there goes mo another round of peasants. Archmage is gaining a lot of experience. And now what is happening here? Another shackle coming in. One, two, three, four shackles. A uh, Mumiko just needs the shackle, a counter shackle. And there is Blizzard to counteract that. Archmage going to get taken down though. This is going to hurt as Yumiko, both sides losing a lot of units here. But Yumiko comes out smelling like a rose he now has dragon hawk riders and only two left for fqq okay and i take that back another three quickly trained back up you can see that there's actually one peasant hiding behind this um field here unable to do very much archmage is getting uh, retrained here as you can see that the dragon hawk riders off over here are gonna try and go after this creep camp wow two very low hit point dragon hawk riders need to get closer oh there goes one there go uh, yumiko's gonna lose another dragon hawk rider there there goes two and what happened the counter shackle was simply too much counter shackle right there and they are not next to the fountain of health all right let's take a look and looks as though another dragon hawk rider is going to get taken down we now see a hawk in the air not quite sure why he went for a hawk a a, a quill be you know i guess yeah, i guess hawk does make sense but it can just get shackled rather easily as well as you can see more dragon hawks are coming in the dragon hawk riders are still sitting at 575 hit points no one has gotten that all important animal war training animal war training increasing the hit points to 700 that is a very very big deal as we are now looking down over here all right the shackling on to the red drake the red drake has not been focused down at all you can see that the shackle and the fountain of health have pretty much been counteracting each other in terms of health regeneration meanwhile the beastmaster trying to get to level three does pick up devotion aura so that will help a little bit in that upcoming fight. Now, Brilliant Aura, Devotion Aura, Archmage now moving off to the north. Let's take a look at this. Archmage is pretty much in trouble. What is it going to really do in a situation like this? Is it going to try and... Oh, there is the Shackle onto the Drake. And there is Blizzard across all of the other units. You can see that damage is being dealt. The Red Drake is the majority of that damage as the Archmage does not have enough mana. All right, Archmage now up to level 3. There is... Um, probably just level one brilliance or they're gonna finish off everything else the archmage absorbing that damage pretty easily picking up a second circlet of nobility back over here you can still see yumiko having a level four level three advantage off those heroes and those griffin riders are now not going to be able to do very much at all with um uh, your opponent already getting dragon hawks that means that you are not going to be able to do much with those griffin riders griffin riders cost more supply so your opponent will always have more dragon hawk riders than you have griffins i think if he had just gotten three or four griffins early on with one dragon hawk rider and then um mass dragon hawk riders that would have been a much much better scenario since the griffins do have such um, such such strong DPS 45 to 55 magic damage which would uh, instantly take down many of these arcane towers with just three to four volleys Archmage now looking to pull back here you can see the Archmage seeing that level four with level two brilliance or a beastmaster now joining in on this fight what's happening off over here two griffins and two dragon hawk riders that is not looking good 39 over 48 supply compared to 65 over 78 this is pretty much a one a one-way battle already archmage is going not or is not going to be able to do much of anything going to try to um, blizzard here not going to do a lot of damage and you can see that the archmage now trying to get away he is going to be forced to perhaps try and, and teleport all the way back home as the dragon hawk riders are going to now just cut him off and what a huge huge block there down goes the archmage at level three fqq just getting well yeah he he is yeah he yeah don't can't say it can't say it 
Anyways, let's make and uh, let's make sure that the Dragon Hawk Riders are just continuing the creep. The Mountain King now sitting at level one, almost level two. A second hero finally on the board, but what can really be done when your opponent has a, a much stronger income, much larger army, and better hero levels? That is the full trifecta in an Archmage. Oh, what is this? The Paladin also added in. So now we are going into the human tri-hero. Mountain King now sitting at level 2. Paladin sitting at level 1 here. Mountain King may try to storm bolt and get in a couple of easy, easy kills. Now, taking a look at the heroes, if we have, do we have a Staff of Preservation on any of the units? Let's take a look at this. No, no Staff of Preservation. Paladin um, sitting at level one. Perhaps he should be the one with the Pure Up of Vitality, or sorry, the Ring of Regeneration, as the Ring of Regeneration um, would help a more fragile Paladin since the Paladin can heal any other friendly unit. Archmage about halfway back out. Staff of Sanctuary is most likely, yes, teleporting the units back home. Um, the income difference is only four, well, is 40% at this point because of the taxation. But Yumiko seems absolutely fine with this strategy. Sitting at 74 over 78, he's going to be sitting on more bases. Oh, poor, poor Griffin quickly getting taken down. There's a couple of shackles. There's more shackles. There's more shackles. And whoever has more Dragonhawk Riders in the Dragonhawk versus Dragonhawk battle will win. And this is going to be game one. Yumiko taking a game off of FQ. Um, FQ opening up with a, with a rather unusual style. And it just did not pay off for him. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. That was an absolute bloodbath as Yumiko walks all over FQ. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed game one.